Um, I have received notice from the Minister for Education that he wishes to make a statement. Before I call the Minister, I remind members that, in light of social distancing being observed by parties, the Speaker's ruling that members must be in the Chamber to hear the statement if they wish to hear a question has been relaxed. Members do still have to make sure that their name is on the speaking list if they wish to be called, but they can do this so uh, by also raising in their place. Uh, but just do give us a wee bit of uh, notification before doing so. Um, I remind members to be concise in asking their question. This isn't an opportunity for debate, and long introductions won't be allowed. I also remind members that, in accordance with long established procedures, points of order aren't normally taken during a statement or the question period after. Uh, Minister. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I wish to make a statement to outline to the House arrangements for awarding CCEA qualifications this summer in the absence of examinations. I will set out the arrangements for GCSE, AS, A level, occupational studies, and CCEA entry level and vocationally related qualifications. As members will, will be aware, it was my intention that exams should go ahead this year, if at all possible. I previously announced a range of adaptations to the planned examinations to ease the assessment burden on students and to take account of the disruption that they had experienced. There is no doubt that examinations are the fairest and most robust method for awarding qualifications. It was therefore my hope and expectation that we would be able to deliver these. However, I had to announce on 6 January that it was no longer possible for exams to proceed as planned due to the worsening public health situation. I am very aware that our young people have been impacted by this whole situation and many are anxious about their future. My priority, therefore, is to ensure that those who are taking qualifications in 2021 will not be disadvantaged by the COVID-19 outbreak. I hope that the details I will lay out today will help ease some of these anxieties and provide the clarity needed so that students can move forward. However, there is a careful balance to be struck between facilitating progression and ensuring that learners are fully prepared for the next stage of their lives, be that in education, training and employment. Of equal importance to the awarding of grades is that we find a way to maximise the remaining time in the school year for learning and teaching, and that we support young people to acquire the knowledge of skills, of content skills and understanding they need to advance to their chosen next stage. It is therefore vital that schools continue as far as possible to teach the content essential for progression, and I would encourage every young person to remain engaged in their education, whether this be by face-to-face -face in the classroom or by remote learning, right up until the end of the academic year. Earlier in the academic year, my officials had instructed CCEA to prepare, prepare contingency arrangements that would be deployed should exams be cancelled. Since, since the 6th of January, my officials have been working closely with CCEA to refine those proposals for alternative awarding arrangements. In doing so, they have engaged with the Education and Training Inspectorate, it, uh, as well as a wide range of stakeholders, including school leaders, trade unions, managing authorities, parents and, very importantly, young people. While I had hoped that we would not be in this situation this year, it should be recognised that we are in a far better position than we were last March. We have the experience of last year to draw on, and lessons have been learned. As you will be aware, I proactively commissioned an independent review of the 2020 uh, awarding arrangements, which was recently completed by Deloitte and which I published on the 8th of January. The lessons learned in this report have been taken into account uh, in finalising uh, arrangements for 2021. These include uh, more weight being given to the professional judgment of teachers. This year, there will be no statistical standardisation using an algorithm. There will be a direct link between the grade awarded and the actual work completed by the learner. There remains alignment with the approaches across other UK jurisdictions. Equity and fairness uh, are at the core of the approach which has been developed, and there will be moderation of centre uh, assessments both within and across centres. In refining arrangements, uh, my officials and CCA have been working on a set of underlying assumptions. Those include all students, including private candidates, who are in their final year of study and due to progress to the next stage of learning will receive a grade. Focus will be on the establishment and implementation uh, of robust processes so students can receive a fair and accurate grade to allow them to make the, uh, the right choices in relation to progression. Additional training and support will be provided to teachers, heads of department and heads of centres to assist them in understanding the, uh, undertaking the assignment of grades. 
They will also assist with the internal and external quality assurance processes with the aim of having more consistency in approach across centres. And finally, no student should be penalised for being unable to complete any part of the course, including a non-examination assessment during a period of school closure or a period of self-isolation. CCEA will not set a statistical ceiling on grades. Each school and college will determine outcomes for its students based on the evidence standard at which the student is performing. It is likely, however, that across our system, overall grade outcomes in 2020 will be broadly similar to those awarded by centres in 2020. Last year, we asked schools and colleges to make a judgment as to the grade they expected their students most likely to have achieved in their examinations had they gone ahead. At that time, learners had almost completed their courses of study and were well advanced in their preparation for timetabled examinations. It has to be acknowledged that the cohort this year has experienced significant disruption to their education across two academic years, and it therefore would be unreasonable to ask teachers to make a judgment about a learner's grade had an examination take place. Centres will therefore be asked to use a range of evidence to arrive at a judgment of the standard at which each learner is performing in the context of the specification being studied. CCA will provide guidance, support and training to help teachers make holistic judgments in order to deliver centre-determined grades. We are asking teachers to use the full breadth of experience available in the context of the specification in order to arrive at a judgment about what each learner knows, understands and can do. Due to the different degrees of disruption experienced by individuals and across different schools, it will be important that teachers have the flexibility to draw on a wide range of experience to inform their judgment. They will therefore be able to draw on evidence generated that relates to any part of the specification. To assist teachers in the process, CCEA will also make available to all schools and colleges assessment resources which may be used as part of the broad portfolio of evidence. These resources will be repurposed papers providing unseen questions and an associated mark scheme. The use of these resources, and I want to stress this, will be optional for schools. They can be used to support their judgments. They are not exams and should not be treated as such. The assessment resources can be used alongside a range of evidence, and the emphasis should be on a broad portfolio of evidence, not a single source. If a learner indicates that they, they want to take an assessment, it is recommended, and in circumstances where the school is not providing that generally, it is recommended that the school facilitates this request, provided that the school feels that the subject content has been covered in a way which enables the learner to complete all or part of the assessment resource. While assessments using these resources should not be the sole evidence used uh, to support a judgment, there may be exceptional circumstances where it is the only evidence available, for example, sometimes in the case of a private candidate. Examination centres should ensure that private candidates can be facilitated to take uh, any necessary arrangements to ensure there is sufficient evidence on which to award a grade. There will be five stages to the awarding uh, GCSEs, AS and A-levels. In stage one, training, support and guidance will be provided by CCEA to schools. Guidance will be provided uh, on how to arrive at holistic judgments and the evidence that may be used. Schools will develop internal moderations processes and CCEA will provide schools with best practice exemplars. Before moving on to the next stage, uh, the process of schools intend to, uh, to deploy this year will be reviewed. CCEA will be issuing guidance to heads of centres throughout February, with training commencing during the same period. Schools and colleges have already begun to enrol for that training. Stage two is the provision of assessment resources and the evidence gathering process. In this period, schools will wish to give further opportunities to candidates to demonstrate what they know, understand and can do. Schools can use evidence of students' performance against the specification in order to promote ongoing engagement by candidates in teaching and learning during the coming months. Schools can utilise evidence from the current period of remote learning, as well as when candidates return to school. In April, to support the evidence gathering process, CCEA will provide schools with assessment resources digitally for all students. This will enable schools to begin the process of gathering evidence, including making use of the assessment resource as necessary. Stage three is the process of determining grades and internal moderation of those grades. During the month of May, schools will complete the process of determining grades 
and undertaking internal moderation in line with the plan set out in Stage 1 and the guidance provided by CCEA. There is no prescribed weighting for any piece of evidence. Rather, the centre determined grade is a holistic judgment of the standard at which the candidate is performing in the context of the specification that is being studied. Centre uh, determined grades must be submitted to CCEA towards the end of May. These are not the candidate's final grades, and centres will be subject to an external quality review. Four stages then is the external review of evidence. We want young people, parents, universities, and employers to have confidence that grades awarded by different schools and colleges are of the right and consistent standard. So, in order to ensure fairness and consistency across centres, there is a process that will be undertaken by CCEA to review the process used by centres to determine grades. Throughout June 2021, uh, the CCEA will carry out external quality assurance process, looking at the grades submitted by all schools and colleges and reviewing samples of candidates' work to make sure the grades submitted accurately reflect the outcomes provided. Work from every school in, and college in, across Northern Ireland will be reviewed. Were there any concerns that the evidence does not support the grades submitted, CCEA will undertake a more extensive review of the centre's evidence. They can, will engage in professional dialogue with the centre and, in some cases, may require the centre to rerun uh, their grading process. The final stage, stage five, is the distribution of grades and post-award review. The date at present, uh, as previously announced, uh, for the issues remains uh, the 24th of August for AS and A levels and the 27th of August uh, for GCSEs. However, it is important that results are issued to students in Northern Ireland on the same date as candidates in other jurisdictions that share GCSE and A level brand, especially in relation to A level results that are needed for university admissions. Ofqual has been consulting on bringing forward the date for issuing results to early July. We have made it clear with colleagues in the Department of Education in England that this will not suit Northern Ireland schools, and have urged us to take this into account. So CCEA is working closely with the awarding organisations and qualification regulators in England and Wales to agree a date. As soon as it agreed, we will let centres and students know. Finally, there is to be a post-award review service to enable any candidate dissatisfied with their grade to appeal the outcome. Candidates will have a right of appeal to their school or college around the centre determined grade. Challenges to the process and whether they are followed or implemented correctly or consistently and in line will be processed by CCEA. CCEA will be working with other examination boards over the coming months to make sure that any similar, a similar appeals process is put in place across all examination boards and further details will be provided in due course. However, I can confirm that I will put in place the same indemnity arrangements as last year to protect schools should they face legal challenges in relation to their role in the alternative awarding process. All those planning to complete and cash in their qualifications this summer will be awarded a grade. This includes those completing their A-level and their GCSE qualifications, namely Years 12 and the Years 14 learners and those in further education and training, as well as those taking AS qualifications. Grades will not be awarded for individual GS GCSE units or modules. I have decided that in years 11 and below, those who may have been planning to cash in GCSE qualifications this summer may not be entered or awarded GCSE qualifications in 2021. There are two exceptions to this, where awarding a grade early may facilitate access to extended learning in the same area. Those taking GCSE maths who plan to progress to GCSE further maths in year 12 will be awarded uh, Grades. Grades will also be awarded to GCSE Irish students uh, who progress to GCSE Gaelic uh, or required for progression to other courses delivered in Irish. This decision is in line with the statutory duty to encourage and facilitate Irish medium education. Years 11 and 13, uh, the implications for 2022 awarding. Candidates in years 11 and 13 will wish to have more information on the arrangements for qualifications in 2022. And CCA therefore have been asked to look specifically at the arrangements for years 11 and 13 and the implications for awarding in 2022. As I mentioned earlier, DCS units or modules will not be awarded grades this summer. And work is ongoing to consider uh, if AS grades might be carried forward to the A-level awards in 2022. So I'm not in a position on that as quite a complex matter to confirm the arrangements and those specific issues today. However, CCA is continuing to explore options and I hope to be able to provide clarity by the end of March or as soon as practical thereafter concerning the arrangements for awarding grades and A levels, sorry, for awarding GCSEs and A levels in 2022. I'm conscious that these learners have also experienced 
significant disruption this year. So I will be looking uh, to take steps to reduce the assessment burden in 2022, similar to the adaptations I've announced for the 2021 examinations. Alongside the qualifications that I've already mentioned, CCEA offers six pathways through occupational studies levels one and two, 14 uh, entry-level qualifications and 26 vocationally related qualifications. These qualifications have no examinations and are therefore not affected by the cancellation of the GCSE uh, and GCE summer examinations timetable. However, the award is based on internal written assessments and practical assessments, which are subject to an external moderation process. While some public health adaptations were put in place already, with the ongoing disruption, completing the full quota of practical components and other formal assessments for these qualifications will be challenging. Therefore, for CCEA's occupational studies, entry-level and vocationally related qualifications, there will be no formal assessment in 2021. Instead, teachers will be asked to use their professional judgment and the evidence available to them in order to reach a centre-determined grade, as a moderation process similar to GCSEs will also be incorporated. I have listened to, to feedback from teachers and further education colleges and can provide assurance that CCEA will provide detailed guidance and support to help teachers make these judgments. I recognise that some learners may be working towards other entry-level or vocational qualifications provided by an awarding organisation other than CCEA. These qualifications fall under the remit of the Department uh, for the Economy. The Minister for the Economy recently announced the cancellation of all external vocational examinations for the remainder of the year, including essential skills. Adaptations to assessments will also be required, where possible, for the wide range of vocational uh, qualifications relating to occupational competence, such as licence to practice. I understand that the Minister has instructed CCA regulation to ensure that awarding organisations uh, put in place suitable alternative awarding organisations that are reflective of this year's particular circumstances. I will ensure that the learners receive fair and timely results. I also understand that Minister Dodds expects clarity on the alternative arrangements for the majority of vocational qualifications to be provided by awarding organisations as early as possible in March 2021. In relation to essential skills and other Northern Ireland only qualification, the Minister expects clarity on the alternative arrangements to be available by the end of February 2021. In conclusion, I thank the House for this opportunity to address you on these important issues. Fairness to pupils is my priority and will continue to be at the forefront of every decision I take. In these exceptional circumstances, uh, I have taken exceptional and unprecedented steps uh, to ensure young, uh, our young people are supported to progress in education, training or employment. And again, I commend the work of all our school leaders and teachers for their efforts in these difficult times. Thank you. I call Chris Little. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. The consequences of last year's algorithm-based grading fiasco continues to be felt across Northern Ireland. I know of at least one pupil that shockingly remains engaged in the appeals process for 2021, even at this stage. So can I ask the Minister for his assessment of the impact of 100 days of out-of-school learning on pupils, how he will mitigate this impact in advance of assessments, and whether he's given any consideration or scoping to the viability of a return to this school year in September 2021 for any pupils. Just to clarify, I assume just on the last point, was the, the member um, referring to effectively a, a repeating of the year? I'm just, just checking that, that side of things. Look, I'll deal with that. There, there is provision, I think, currently within guidance that is given to, um, uh, to schools, indeed boards of governors, where there will be, for a small number of pupils, a repeat of the year. That, that is something that is already in place, and there is the opportunity to use that. From the point of view of doing an overall repeat of the year across the sector simply would not be practical from a logistical, financial point of view, but also it would mean that, that levels of education would be held back. What is the case is that there is a strong need, and he mentions very rightly about the, the days of disruption that have taken place. Now, it is important to note that we have had throughout that period, and there has been a much greater level, I think, of, of um, both readiness and ability to be able to provide that in terms of remote learning during this uh, particular phase. However, that does undoubtedly create a level of disruption uh, that is there towards pupils. And I think 
I am sure the member would agree with me, indeed the whole House would agree with me, that face-to-face -face teaching is the best possible means of teaching compared to remote learning. To that extent, whenever I put the paper to the executive dealing with the current situation between now and March, uh, one of the elements of that was to look at uh, and get we got a commitment in principle from the executive that there would be a, a scheme of catch-up, uh, similar suppose, to the Engage programme, that would take place in 2021-22 and would be funded via, via COVID money. I'd be bringing forward the details of those proposals to the executive, uh, but I will um, try and sort of, uh, as part of that, I have received that in principle. In terms of the broader level of, of mitigation within the results side of it, because I suppose we are asking um, schools to make an assessment of call it the learning profile uh, of our students. It is not a question of making a degree of second guesses as to what they would have done directly in an examination, because different pupils will have had different levels of disruption. And as such, uh, schools are in a holistic position to uh, mirror out where they believe the abilities of their pupils are. Uh, and consequently, undoubtedly, not only will different schools be in different places, but we know that individuals will have been in different places. So some will have missed, probably uh, particularly during the first time, a relatively small amount of time. Others will have missed a more extensive time. And the holistic opportunities are ones that will be able to take account of that and be able to tailor those needs to any individual pupils. Call Robin Newton. Thank you, Mr Deputy Speaker. And again, I thank the Minister for coming to the Chamber. He's probably in this Chamber as a Minister more often than any other Minister. Uh, Minister, I, I note that within uh, your statement you have indicated that there would be training, support and guidance for schools. And indeed, in your conclusion, you outline that the fairness to pupils is your priority, and I think we would all uh, agree with that, and uh, that that will continue to be at the forefront of every decision you take. Uh, and I don't think anyone would uh, disagree with that. But can I ask, what assurances are there that the higher education sector will indeed accept the process uh, of grades awarding that you've just outlined? Member, for uh, his question, I think it is important um, that we both ensure that, that, from that perspective, that there is fairness across the system. Because, uh, particularly when it comes to, and if we're talking about the higher education system, where there is competition between pupils for, for instance, university places. It is important that they're on a level playing field um, with, uh, with others throughout, not just the UK, but the Republic of Ireland and other places that, that, that they can compete on a level playing field. As such, if, um, if the slope was, if, you, if I can put it this way, was made more steeply for our pupils and they're more difficult to achieve grades, that would disadvantage them. But similarly, I suppose, which is perhaps the, the less considered uh, position, if circumstances were such that um, pupils were receiving grades which were perceived to be an awful lot easier than other jurisdictions, then that would also then create a level of, of suspicions. Um, I think in terms of the, you mentioned specifically, and also the case that, that for a number of our pupils, particularly at A level, side of it, will take other examination boards that are outside Northern Ireland. Um, the level of demand, I think, does mean that, that higher education providers, I think, will see these as valid qualifications. There has been work going on between CCA as the regulator and higher education providers. The do higher education providers recognise this is an extraordinary uh, context in which qualifications uh, have been put in place. So, as such, uh, I think there is recognition from universities that uh, we have a system here which is within the ballpark of where other jurisdictions are going to be doing. Um, that is the case for uh, UK higher education. And similarly, I think the Irish Universities Association, for those who are seeking to um, st continue their studies in the Republic, have been appraised of the Northern Ireland approach and have confirmed that across the board it will accept UK results by the exam boards. And this has also been confirmed by the, the regulators. So hopefully, none of our students should be in any way disadvantaged. I call Pat Sheehan. I thank the Minister for his statement here this morning. I welcome this statement from the Minister, and particularly the fact that he has abandoned the field algorithm and is prepared to put more faith in the judgment, the professional judgment of our teachers. However, the devil's in the detail, and particularly in terms of uh, the uh, assessment models and, uh, uh, and how teachers are going to be, or how uh, 
sorry, mediation uh, uh, is going to take place. Uh, moderation, sorry. Um, I think it's fair to say that the, the tenure of this particular minister has been characterised by dithering and delay. Uh, last year's failed assessment process and the transfer test, test fiasco are just a couple well, of examples of it. August, uh, and uh, um, like the football manager who's lost the changing room, uh, the minister has lost confidence of teachers, parents, and children. And according to the most latest opinion poll, uh, there's also a lack of public confidence. Uh, Maleskil, just um, th I've given you a fair bit of latitude already, Afric, but ta cash to you all, or we need a question. Uh, given all these issues, Minister, uh, can, uh, can the Minister tell us uh, what steps he's taken to address the um, poor communication and complete lack of transparency that were highlighted by Deloitte uh, in regard to the uh, assessment fiasco last year? Well, within that, I mean, I was going to welcome the member to his new role. I know that he has come in via the January transfer window onto the um, uh, Education uh, Committee. I, I'll, I, I don't know uh, what, the, what the transfer fee was for the, the, the member. Uh, can I say, in terms of the, the broader issues, look, we have taken across the board in relation to this, and indeed, I suppose, these announcements in terms of details, because there's still consultation happening elsewhere, probably predate um, other. Uh, other groups within that. Now, again, the member talks about coming to a conclusion in terms of some of these issues. Uh, he is right in terms of the, the detail will be there, and so therefore, in terms of moderation pros, moderation itself will be essentially something that is guided, which will be internal to the school. There is then, as I outlined in the uh, in the statement, a level of external uh, assessment, and that will be on the basis uh, of using uh, an iterative process, particularly between CCEA and the schools themselves. I should say, and I give an assurance, that algorithms would not be used. Algorithms, to be fair, were used, I think, last year initially in every jurisdiction. They are actually part of, and again, like seeing the internal workings of a clock, uh, the situation is that algorithms would normally be used in terms of standardisation every year. It is just the circumstances of last year that brought them into uh, a level of, of uh, concern. In terms of the broad issue of communications, uh, there will be detailed work will go on between CCEA, particularly in the schools. Uh, there will be, I think, up to issue later on today, detailed information directly going to schools. And also, as part of that, we will have within the department uh, website over the next few days uh, a frequently asked questions section so people can delve in. And we'll also be doing a version in terms of the information directly, probably for tomorrow, uh, for parents so they can also actually uh, avail of this. So uh, I think that the situation in terms of levels of communication. And indeed, uh, the, even the Deloitte report highlighted probably the issues of communication quite late on in the day, rather than what was being done in the March-April period in terms of policy side of it. Uh, I think every effort will be to try to uh, explain uh, as much as possible and communicate that as clearly as possible. Uh, Daniel McCrossan for your cash. I call Daniel McCrossan. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for his statement. The statement will bring some uh, relief to teachers, young people, and parents, and it will finally help curb much of the lingering uncertainty that you have continually presided over, Minister. Uh, I am glad you have finally put the dodgy algorithm tool into the bin where it should have been last year. Last year, you did not trust teachers' judgment and ignored all the warning signs. Will the Minister now admit that he and SIA got it very badly wrong? that you added to the hurt to our young people, to our teachers, added to their stress and anxiety, and to that of parents. You left tears in the eyes of a lot of young people last year, Minister, because of your failure to listen and act. Will you now, Minister, given that you have admitted in this statement it was wrong, will you apologise to those young people so we can move on and learn from these lessons? What I am not going to do, frankly, is simply play to the gallery on what is quite a serious issue in relation to it. And I think some of the remarks of, of the member are done for a certain level of effect rather than reality. The Deloitte report does deal with the, the full detail of the, the situation. Uh, it is clear that circumstances were such that, that there was a lot of problems created for our young people. The indication from that, in terms of the role of the department and the role of myself, was that the policy decisions that were taken last year, as is highlighted by the Deloitte report, uh, the policy decisions were got right. And indeed, on that basis, uh, the situation was on some of the implementation issues. 
Uh, mention has been made of the, the algorithm. As I said, in normal years, algorithms were used. I had indicated, I think, previously that in terms of um, even the arrangements that were being put in place, potentially in terms of examinations, would not have used algorithms. So that, was, that has been something that's not simply been adopted today, but adopted from quite a, a period of, of time ago. And I believe that we have a, a sound basis as much as possible. You mentioned about judgments. You know, I, I've made it clear, and I think this would be shared uh, in many bits. If we were in a position, in, if things were normal circumstances and we were positioned simply to go ahead with examinations, examinations do represent the most objective way that you can do an assessment of an individual. And I think that that would be uh, uh, accepted uh, by everyone. But I think that we've found a route which I think is again consistent with what is happening, uh, is going to happen I think in elsewhere, that we have uh, that judgment, but also one then that is put in such a robust context to make sure then that there can also be both fairness across the board and a level then of high level of trust that, can, that external users, be the employers, be the universities or others, can provide a, a level of trust within the, uh, the qualifications that will emerge. I call Robbie Butler. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Um, welcome to the paper, um, albeit that we'll have to look at the detail and behind that, Minister. And I'm sure it's a relief for you to be able to bring what may be some good news for teachers and students across Northern Ireland today. Um, three points I'd just like to draw out very briefly. Indemnity arrangements for schools. Uh, centres will be asked to use a range of evidence and moderation between centres, centre assessments uh, within and across centres. Uh, Minister, there are 16,000 uh, P7 pupils who are in a similar position to the A-level and GCSE students, and I believe today's announcement on uh, the, uh, the process for allocation of schools is deeply unfair to those 16,000 pupils, and I hope it's taken on board uh, and that there will be a contingency and a better plan for next year's P7. Um, those three things could have been used for those P7s this year. Um, last year's GCSE and A-level pupils, I think it was 200. Does the member have a question? Yes, please. I'll add it now, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker. Um, last year, I think there were 240 A-level and GCSE pupils awarded a U grade. There's a, there's a few comments within your paper today. I hope it will give some comfort to anyone engaged in any level of course this year, whether it's GCSE or A-level, that there will be no U, U grades. Uh, handed out this year. It says no student should be penalised for being Sorry, can I ask the member a course. question? Thank you. Thank you. Uh, that is a bit like one of those examination questions with the ad, the ad word at the end of it, discuss uh, on that basis. Uh, look, can I say in relation to the situation, look, every student will be treated fairly. They will not be unfairly penalised because of levels of disruption. Uh, but from that point of view, in terms of any, any level of, of, of grading, there is always um, the possibility that, that, and indeed, normally what we actually saw last year that I think in terms of A-levels, I think there was a total of eight people got a U grade. That is massively down on what it is in terms of normal years. Given that the grades will range down to U grades, you know, the U grade itself cannot be taken off the table in that regard. And there may be somebody who's, for example, for whatever reason, and if we take, for instance, uh, you know, whether it's in school context or private candidate context, who, for example, say simply has not engaged whatsoever with that, and so consequently, there remains the possibility that someone will get a U grade, but they will be fairly judged in relation to that. I indicated that I believe the standards would, largely speaking, be on the same basis as 2020 in terms of the end results. So I would anticipate that, for instance, U grades would be a very small number of those. But that, that remains, you know, in fact, if we were simply to rule out a particular grade, then actually that would, um, that would, mit that would actually indicate to the system that it, it wasn't a proper system in that, in that regard. But they will be few and far between. Uh, the, the member is wrong in terms of the, you know, we are not, you're not comparing like with like when you're comparing P7 students with year 12, 13, 14. Uh, we're able as part of this, for instance, to have uh, assessment resources. Pupils are competing against each other, so it's about how people are comparing within schools. There are a small number of schools, for instance, will use some form of academic tool in terms of their post-primary transfer as some degree of gateway mechanism, but a lot of schools will have received advice which suggests that that is not something which is necessarily the most robust. It's up to each individual school. But it is clearly the case, and where the difference on this is, the transfer bit is legally the responsibility directly of the, uh, of the board's governors, of the authorities of each school. To change that would require a change in legislation. I've looked. Oh, sorry? Sorry, giving somebody an indemnity doesn't... Well, Certainly from the point of view of indemnity, and indemnity does take, 
take place at times in terms of post-primary transfer. We give a range of criteria which indemnification. That doesn't, by its, by its nature, it may well incentivise particular, um, uh, particular routes, but what it doesn't do, actually, it still doesn't remove the pure legal responsibility and authority of boards of governors to make that particular choice. Legally, and whether it's, uh, it's via previous legislation of the Coronavirus Act, there is not the power on the Department to impose uh, within that. And it's been gone, gone into in, in great detail in connection with that. But essentially, I suppose one of the differences is that in terms of particularly transfer tests, they are a private organisation running it. This, which is something which does for, uh, fall squarely under the remit of the Department of Education, are public examinations, public examinations in which uh, there is the direct control in terms of CCEA for those no down students that are doing that. That doesn't cover every student because some students will do examination boards outside of Northern Ireland, but there is a clear distinction both from a legal point of view, from the point of view of public examinations, from the point of view of the quality of information that is there that makes this very distinctive from looking at what will happen in terms of P7 pupils. I'm sure that's a debate we'll come back to, but for today it is about those public qualifications towards the latter stages of, uh, of students' uh, academic careers. Call Morris Bradley. Thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and I'd like to thank the Minister for uh, delivering his statement here in the House uh, this morning. And you'll be delighted, Mr. Speaker, that I have a question. Uh, can I ask the Minister, uh, can practical examinations, controlled assessments, uh, and uh, case work, coursework that have been completed form part of the consideration uh, on a student's qualification results? Yes, they can. And, I mean, it is indicated, I think, that some of the practical circumstances will mean that some of that will be more challenging on its basis. But it, it will be depending upon the nature of the, um, the subject matter. There will be, for example, certain elements of practical coursework um, that will be particularly relevant to, to certain courses. The, the, the idea is that, that while guidance and training will be given by CCA in terms of the awarding, there is no barrier in terms of the level of, of evidence that can be produced. And so consequently, that can be levels of assessment that take place on a practical basis. In many instances, schools will have already banked that level of knowledge, particularly from the first term. I hope there will be opportunities as we move on to bank that as well. But from that point of view, I think there's the flexibility within this for a holistic judgment to be made, rather than it being specifically on the basis of uh, one particular test, for example, to be able to test that. So those will be able to take it into account. Here, sir, Karen Mullen for her new case. I called Karen Mullen. And Minister, I also welcome the statement and the alternative arrangements presented today. Following on from the Chair of the Education Committee, Minister, I would ask for further clarity on, the de on details around COVID specific allowances for those young people, specifically those who had their education disrupted through September to December, like my daughter who missed seven weeks when there was not remote learning in place. And I would also like to take it a step further and ask you to detail the alliances that, that will be there for those who are still without an IT device, data or broadband connection. The alliances will be given the opportunity from the point of view of the schools because I suppose where things differ from a previous situation, uh, and you know, I, I appreciate um, the member has made, I think, very cogent points in terms of where we are in terms of the, the COVID alliances. Uh, I suppose when we were looking very specifically at a, cogent, uh, at a COVID allowance as such, we were looking at something which would embed some level of mathematical formula into this, because where it was based around a situation previously where we looked at a reduced course content and an examination, you would have had effectively a mark which was then adjusted. That will not be the case within this. Schools will be able to draw their own experience, not what they believe, if you like, that the student, if suddenly flung into an examination room, would have achieved but where they believe from the, the, the wide range of evidence of where they believe the balance of their uh, abilities would be on the particular subject. So as such, I think that schools will be able to, uh, and if we take very specific examples on that basis, that, that where it is not simply just something as well that has happened across the school, but has happened to particular individuals, they will be able to take that into account in arriving at a holistic judgment. And so to that extent, I think that the level of assessment that they will produce for a, a child uh, that is, has been massively disrupted by COVID may well be on a different scale to what is there. But because it's holistic in its nature, it will not be a formulaic process so that you have a certain amount of period off, you achieve a certain, a certain mark. The school will be in a good position to be able to judge that, and that will also be taken into account whenever any level of assessment. I should say as well 
that whenever CCA would be doing a level of external assessment, it's not really on the basis of whether an individual child's or student's result has been got right. It's about whether, if you like, the, the broad range of where the school is coming from has pitched this at the right level on that basis, but they will be able to take into account the very specific circumstances that will face individuals. I call William Humphrey. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I thank the Minister for the statement of the House this morning. Minister, uh, like others in the Chamber, I welcome the uh, jettison of the algorithms. Uh, this is something which uh, has caused great concern to parents, teachers, uh, and of course pupils in particular. So I welcome that and congratulations on that announcement. Can the Minister assure this House that uh, students from Northern Ireland will not be negatively affected uh, as their counterparts in the mainland in relation to exams and qualifications? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the issue is indicated, I think there's, there's arguably three levels of fairness that we need to ensure. First of all, fairness uh, between centres so that if you like, it doesn't matter which particular school uh, a student goes into, they will be treated fairly on an equal basis with each other. That's as regards particularly the Northern Ireland examinations. Secondly, obviously, there will be a level of fairness between those students from Northern Ireland um, and students from other jurisdictions, and particularly, I suppose, those who will be using their qualification to compete for either um, a further education, uh, a higher education place, or indeed employment. And also, I think there needs to be that level of equity between students in Northern Ireland who are doing different courses. Um, as such, I think there is work um, ongoing. There's been work ongoing with CCA and Ofqual, um, and I think that, that what is being announced today uh, will mean that, that, that everywhere should be on a very similar uh, playing field, a level playing field between England, Wales, and Northern Ireland. It may be that the exact arrangements are not exactly the same. But we believe it actually means that there can be that direct comparability and portability because students will want to be in a position that whatever destination they take, that there's no barriers to put to them either immediately or later life to uh, what they want to achieve. Uh, and so I think that, that that system, and similarly, I think, and it's one of the areas which there's still some further work to be done. That's why the, uh, the JCQ, the Joint Council on Qualifications, is looking to try to make sure that, that whatever mechanisms are put in place across the jurisdictions and between boards in terms of appeals are of a roughly similar nature to try to make sure, again, because uh, it's not just a question of, as I said, there are the two dangers, not simply a question of uh, the danger of making things more difficult for our pupils by having a higher tariff to gain grades. It's also the case that if, if, if the CCA results we are seen as some level of easy route or soft touch. That would create a danger for our pupils as well, because it would mean that in circumstances, uh, universities and others may take a view of that our qualification is not worth as much as from another jurisdiction. So it is about trying to maintain as much as possible a level of fairness across the board so there is no disadvantage to our pupils. John O'Dowd, when you cash, I call John O'Dowd. Minister, COVID-19 has accelerated uh and will accelerate many changes in our society. We now enter the second year without high stake examinations in education, and perhaps it will accelerate that debate. What is the purpose of high risk examinations in education? But I don't want to test the patience of the can or the last can call at this moment in time. What consultation has the Minister and his department and SIA had uh, with the teaching unions in regards to the, for the changes he's announcing today? We have gone through this. I mean, part of the reason why, in one sense, it was to try to front load consultation rather than backload to give people uh, certainty. There would have been the option simply of doing some form of entirely internal process, coming up with a set of proposals, and then putting this out to wider consultation for a period of time. But that only creates, I think, a, a level of uncertainty. So we have worked uh, with and indeed consulted with, first of all, uh, stakeholders as regards uh, we have a stakeholder group in terms of. Uh, post-primary uh, principles, which were drawn, if you like, from all sections, non-academic selective, academic selective, uh, the different sectors, but also then consulted directly, I think, with the teaching unions in terms of uh, their position on it, and also the opportunity to have a level of, of road testing on this, with, uh, as we did previously in terms of announcements on examinations with groups of students. That has been done at an official's level, with the idea that uh, while there is no perfect solution in relation to this, we believe that this is, broadly speaking, uh, a route which, uh, largely speaking, people are content with. Now, there will be, and I, I guess one of the obstacles to this is, there are a couple of aspects of this which still require further work to be done. And I suppose the issue is to try to get 
if you like, the 90 per cent announcement out at this stage while working on those final uh, details, rather than simply try to wait until, say, the end of February or March before we make a picture covering absolutely everything in that, in that regard on it. So yes, there has been that, that consultation has taken place and will also be ongoing as we, we move towards some of the implementation side of that. I said guidance, the next stage will be that guidance will be issued and training will be done in February uh, as regards that. And we believe that this is a cooperative process between schools and CCA. There is also, I think, for instance, in terms of the indemnification, would provide not only a level of protection directly which is needed for schools, it will also provide that for teachers as well, so they can exercise their professional judgment without fear of uh, the concern of a looming court case hanging over them on that basis, which I think is the right way to do it as well. Mayor Justin McNulty for any cash. I call Justin McNulty. Minister, I'm concerned about the omission of the oral element of languages assessment, especially Gaelic or Lan's native tongue. I'm also concerned about uh, some students who take subjects modularly, who may be disadvantaged. I'm feeling a little bit dizzy. I'm feeling a bit overwhelmed by these uh, proposed measures, complex in all that they are, and maybe some, some solutions provided. But I'm worried about teachers and the already overwhelmed teachers and teaching staff and how, how they have been consulted with and the union has been consulted with. But fundamentally, teacher, fundamentally Minister, we are talking about examinations here when we should be focusing elsewhere. We should be focusing on recharge. On a week which is Children's Mental Health Week, what measures are you taking to help children prepare and be ready for these exams? What are you doing to recharge their mental health? What are you doing to recharge them emotionally? What are you doing to recharge them physically? What are you doing to recharge them in terms of their socialisation? What are you doing to recharge them in terms of their academics? I think there's a number well, of I, questions there, Minister. Yes, so your choice. Uh, I think sort of there'll be sort of almost a paper we'll have to produce in relation. To that. I suppose the best cure for dizziness is to be able to sit down after a while in, in that regard. And I, what I would say is that, that I admire the ingenuity of the, the member to, to bring this back to a range of issues. I know he's raised, and look, I think I would share his concerns. So I've indicated that particularly on the academic side of it, and there's an opportunity then for further bids as well to be made for next year's COVID funding. Uh, that whenever uh, the proposals and the executive um, looked at the situation as regards at one of the more recent executive meetings where we tried to give certainty to students, teachers and parents and beyond for the after half term period where we looked there was an extension until the 5th of, of March. Uh, without breaking any level of, of confidentiality within the executive, there was a paper which scoped out the options, which made a recommendation, which then looked beyond that, but also as part of it made a recommendation that there would be in 2021, sorry, 2021, 2022, uh, a level of support that would be required, particularly on the academic side, uh, to, to be able to support, uh, support pupils on that basis. And that's why we got a commitment directly from the executive with bringing forward papers in relation to that. The point in terms of mental health, I think, is well made. And as such, there was both um, COVID recovery money that was made available this year. In terms of the level of that well-being, again, I would look potentially to the executive to an extension of that. But also, I think even prior to COVID, there was money that was able to be secured this year into the budget to expand the level of um, support that was available in terms of wellbeing and mental health issues. I think it will be a growing issue. And to some extent, a lot of this will not be absolutely immediately apparent in terms of, in terms of day one. He has mentioned, I think, specifically in terms of the oral element. And as part of that, when working with CCA, working with public health, there are particular issues in terms of levels of assessment, and this is not on the basis then, uh, and indeed there will be classroom evidence that will have been banked that, that can be used, but in terms of a formal test on oral side of things, that was, I think, felt to be something that from a public health point of view and those components of examinations that would potentially leave, leave things at most risk in terms of, in terms of spread of COVID. So it's, it's about trying to balance that out as well. But, uh, because I've announced here as part of this will be a broader holistic side of it for languages, for example, schools will be able to use whatever evidence they've, they've gathered up uh, on, for instance, on oral basis uh, on those languages to be able to feed that into their assessment of the centre determined. So there's no barrier to that. Here, Mayor Melissa McHugh for on your cash. I call Melissa McHugh. Uh, Minister, I know that uh, you have alluded to this already in two previous answers, but uh, we all know that the quality of opportunity is uppermost when it comes to application to further higher education. But can I ask you, Minister, 
What conversations have actually taken place, in particular uh, with Dublin, given that they have alternative procedures now in place for the leave insert, and the other jurisdictions in Scotland, England and Wales, to ensure not only in students travelling to the north of Ireland have that equality of opportunity, but that students from the north of Ireland going to the Republic or to the other jurisdictions, that they also have that uh, equality of opportunity? Well, look, I think you make a very valid point. Uh, I think, first of all, in terms of examination or indeed qualification side of it, we are trying to maintain um, Scotland tends to be in a slightly different place. They, they've always had a very different education system and a different qualification system. So while there are conversations that take place with Scotland, they are probably in a slightly different uh, plane to uh, other UK jurisdictions. What we've tried to make sure is that there is what's called the system of, of three-nation comparability, that largely speaking, that we are on a similar plane between uh, ourselves, England and Wales, on a number of those issues as well. Uh, and as indicated, that's not simply by way of looking at the comparison uh, of a student in Belfast compared to a student in Birmingham or wherever. It, it's also the fact that, roughly speaking, about 20% of our A-level students, for instance, or 20% of qualifications will come from an examination board which is based outside of Northern Ireland. So it's got to be that level of fairness. As indicated, there has been discussions with the higher education authorities. I think they are content, provided there is a broad similarity between jurisdictions, that that will be something. And I've also mentioned and indicated that I think there's been direct conversations between CCA and the uh, Irish Universities Authority. So, you know, and I know that, and, and I'm sure former Minister O'Dowd can, can testify this, you know, at times there has been on that north side of it, in terms of recognition of qualifications, there has in the past been a level of friction that is there, but we are assured that in terms of recognition of what is there, Irish university authorities uh, will do that as well. And while I suspect there has not been so much of a direct, uh, broader international discussion beyond that, uh, because there will be relatively few of our students will seek a university place, for example, outside of either uh, Great Britain or the Republic of Ireland, um, I think, broadly speaking, that universities across the world uh, will have a level of recognition of the very unique circumstances that, that we have been in in terms of COVID, and I think there will be a level of allowance uh, within that. And just before I called Kelly Armstrong, I would take this opportunity to express, I am sure, the condemnation of the entire House at the, the graffiti attack on, on your premises, Kelly, and our solidarity is with you at this time. So now I call Kelly Armstrong. Thank you very much, Deputy Speaker, and I would extend that to, I believe, DUP members who were also attacked last night, namely uh, Mr Weir and the MP Jim Shannon. Um, sad th times to see, but hopefully we'll share the paint thinner and we'll get that cleaned off quickly, Peter. Um, I'll declare an interest, Deputy Speaker, as the mother of an A-level student who's hoping to get grades this, this summer, good grades, I hope, and I'm a governor of, of a post-primary school. Um, Minister, I've noticed in your paper that you've said that you're not in a position to confirm arrangements today as this is a very complex matter. Absolutely wouldn't expect you to do so, but a key principle of grading is understandability. Um, can you help us and the learners understand exactly how internal and external moderation will work this year, if that will be included in the documents that are released to them? For example, um, if you could confirm or will it be confirmed in those documents how long a COVID-related absence needs to be in order to get grade allowances and what the marks could be? And um, Also, could you give insur assurances um, to those learners who are currently sitting Welsh board exams that, that, that this does not interfere? I know that there is a ban on that going forward. Um, we are not just so clear why that ban is there, but for those who are, are due to take them this year, that, that, that they will get results too. A couple of issues. I mean, first of all, across different examination boards, everyone will get a result. Uh, specifically, there are concerns, and this is where it becomes probably a little bit into the, the realm of, of detail. And that what I would say is there, there are some concerns over the direction of travel of WJEC as regards WJEC qualifications. It is also the case that WJEC uses uh, Educas as, a, as an awarding body. Um, which is then largely speaking designed for the external market to Wales, and there is no restriction placed on that. Uh, uh, that would be an issue across the board in terms of the Welsh boards that will always be kept under a level of review, principally because I should say specifically on that issue, it does not impact on any current learner, and any action that is being uh, considered will, would only impact uh, potentially in terms of those seeking to do a course from September 22 onwards. So anybody, for instance, currently um, 
looking at, at AS levels, at A levels, uh, will be put in place. No, the maximum amount of information, I suppose, um, there will be detailed information given to schools and also frequently asked questions side of it and also then uh, to parents as well, because I understand there will be a, a level of concern. In terms of, I suppose, the, the process, as I outlined, I suppose, it will move from the initial assessment within the school, then there will be internal moderation in the school. Uh, obviously, uh, you know, there will always be some level of concern among some students of, you know, does my teacher particularly rate me? Do they like me? We want to make sure that there's not some level of favouritism. Now, there is a high level of professional judgment, but there will be that internal moderation that will happen within the school. The next stage is those um, provisional positions will be then given to SEA. They will do effectively sampling across every school. It will be, I think, largely speaking, on the basis of one unit per school to provide that level of reassurance. If they find that that takes that to a level which is beyond what it should be, beyond level tolerance, they will do a deeper sampling. The next stage is then to potentially uh, engage with the school directly. There will be that level of professional discussion. There may well be a, a question of saying, look, look at your processes. If there's problems with your processes, you may need to rerun them. So it is about a professional conversation taking place. And we'll be happy to spell out that, that level of detail within any uh, correspondence and communication that's put in place. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, and could I welcome the Minister's statement? Just, Minister, under the stage five, the distribution of grades and post award review, why would issuing of results earlier here not suit schools here in the north? Well, no, I think the issue, I suppose, is just the practicalities of if we have a situation that, for example, the initial work is done towards the end of May and then there's a process of external assessment that needs to take place, I think the issue is largely speaking the practicalities of trying to make sure that all that can be processed in a manner which is both practical but also, you know, also I suppose the longer you have to assess things and make sure that things are got right, it reduces the risk of any errors occurring. To that extent, I think the, the key driver is to make sure that um, where there are public examinations that are externally then allocated across boards, that they're done so effectively on the same time scale. That, that would be the issue in relation to that. So it's about trying to ensure that across jurisdictions and across different boards, they all issue. We don't want a, a situation, for example, where somebody in a CCA um, grade um, is given an award, and that's either a long before or long after, perhaps somebody in a different subject in the same classroom getting a grade from a different, a different board. It's about trying to ensure that across the board. That's why, to a large extent, while Scotland, as I said, has tended to be in a slightly different time frame always from everywhere else, that we've tried to ensure that as regards to GCSE awards and A-level awards in every year, that we have um, it done on, on the same basis, on the same time as that. So that, that would be the, the reason in relation to that. Pat Catney, for your case, I call Pat Catney. Thank you, Minister, for coming here today and for presenting your statement, which I welcome. Minister, given that she prioritised uh, the algorithm over the well-being of our children and young people, will you today promise this House a full, independent review of SEA, their processes and their leadership team? Our young people shouldn't pay the price for SEA's mistakes. There has been an independent review of what happened last year. It has been published in the Deloitte report. It is there in, in full levels of detail. I, I think, to be fair, while clearly in terms of the implementation side of things there were mistakes made, you know, I, I do not want to be fair to characterise the professional judgment that has been there from SEA on the basis of, well, we do not care about, about people's welfare. We support the algorithm no matter what. No, I, I think we have got to be fair to people in terms of the assessment that they made, it, particularly I think around what were quite tight timeframes, and it is also the case. I make two other points, or three other points. One, there is no algorithm being used this year. Algorithms are generally used every year. It is the fact that because they have not been backed up by examinations is where particularly the problem arose. And standardisation happens every year. This is something which is probably not necessarily sort of uh, realised or known. And I would also indicate that while uh, there were issues around the algorithm, there were also issues which happened pretty much in every jurisdiction. We find this in different, different jurisdictions, and I think even, uh, although they came a good deal later, uh, that there were issues around the Leaving Cert, for example, in the Republic of Ireland, which was issued in, a month or two after what was there in terms of the, the UK jurisdiction. So um, I think clearly we tried to ensure that within this lessons have been learned. 
There has been that full examination of went, what went on last year, but let us also not be, not I think, fall into the trap as well of taking people who've tried to use professional judgment, who've tried to do uh, what appeared to be the, the best possible um, outcome, and subject them to becoming scapegoats either. I think people deserve fair judgment, and I think the Deloitte report covers that in a fair amount of detail. I call Rachel Woods. Thank you, um, Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for her statement and join too in the condemnation of the graffiti attacks on Kelly Armstrong and all other political representatives and their offices. The Minister mentioned evidence a number of times and said that centres will be asked to use a range of evidence to arrive at a judgment of the standard at which each learner is performing in the context of the specification being studied, and that SEA will provide guidance, support and training to help teachers make judgments in order to deliver centre-determined grades. So can I ask the Minister when exactly will be teaching staff provided with the necessary guidance and support as to what evidence can be used? When will they get this clarity and will this ensure consistency? I think it, the idea would be to drive as much consistency as possible. I mean, again, because there's, there's always going to be a certain element of subjective judgment. Can you have absolute pure consistency? I think the, the striving to as much as possible. In terms of both the guidance that will be provided by SEA and the training, that will take place during February. And obviously, at the moment, for the rest of February, uh, there's good work ongoing in terms of schools with the remote learning, but there will also be that probably level of flexibility because uh, there will be that opportunity for that training. We want to make sure that's done as, as quickly as possible, but also done in a thorough manner. And before we conclude on that, Minister, if I could just convey similarly, I was unaware of any tax on your, your party offices, but likewise to condemn those, and I'm sure I, I reflect uh, the view of the entire House in, in reflecting that com condemnation back to you. And if you could similarly convey best wishes to Jim Shannon. Uh, thank you. Uh, that concludes uh, the questions on the statement. Thank you. We just take a ease now while we move to the next business.